So, hello everybody. We'd like to start off by saying thank you for taking this time out of your day to really look at our ideas and give us feedback on them and tell us what you think and really just taking this time to dedicate it towards our business teams and just our school in general. So, thank you. And with that in mind, we'd like to start off with a little story to really get the ball rolling and get the idea out there. So, as I was younger, my dad was the one who really taught me about technology and video gaming as a whole. And that was our common bond that we had. But as I've gotten older, he's gotten a visual disability that made it harder and harder for him to be able to play these games with me and really common, hold this common ground together. So we've been, we haven't been able to keep that common touch of playing games together like we used to. And that's where this, our idea comes in. Hello, we are Micropunch Games and we are a mobile-based video game development company that plans on developing auditory-based games for people with visual disabilities. So with that, hello, my name is Elissa Eversall, I'm the CEO. I'm Tiana Mazzarella, I'm the CMO. I'm Ben Lake, I'm the CTO. And I'm Jacob Reba, I'm the CFO. Like so, we, we looked at mobile games right now, like all of them have a, a, lot, a lot of visuals and uh, audio is uh, minimal. And some of them are just outright hard to play. So we found a solution where we can we can make them uh, like more audio based, uh, like say an audio book or something like that, with simple controls, uh, simple controls, and um, uh, we want to offer you a unique experience. So our competition, we really only have one competitor that we know of, which is a, a company called Blindfold Games. And what Blindfold Games does is they take already known games, such as like casino games or matching games, and they just take out the visuals and so that uh, people with visual disabilities can play it. However, the difference is that they take these already known games and make them easier for people with visual disabilities. What we want to do is we want to create new games with new titles in order to really captivate our audience and bring them in. Um, another problem with Blindfold Games is that they they choose to only have their games accessible on one app store, which is the Google Play Store, and they refuse to move it over to the Apple Store. And with that, it makes it harder for all people to be able to get involved in playing them, and that's why we want to make a difference and make it easier for everybody. So what makes us unique from our competitor is that we are planning to continue to create our titles. We want to have new games, new ideas all the time for our players to play, and we want to have a very strong community outreach with our players. We want to be able to know what they want, how they want it, when they want it, as soon as possible in order to keep our company going for them in the best ways possible. And we're planning to utilize our players' imagination by creating these games and making them like audio-based books so that when they're told to imagine something, they can imagine it however they want. For example, if I told you guys, imagine a long, a tall tree right now. Some of you may imagine a pine tree, some of you may imagine a palm tree. The differences depend on what you choose to imagine. So now moving into our TAM and SAM, our addressable markets. So starting off with our total addressable market, we wanted to start off with a really broad number, so we found the total amount of gamers in the United States. Now the reason the number is 211 million, which is 64% of the U.S. population, is because a gamer is a very broad term. Really, anyone that plays, if you play backgammon or poker on your phone, you're considered a mobile gamer. So it's, it's a really big group. So we also, out of that 64% of the U.S. population, we found that 2.6% of the U.S. population have some sort of visual impairment. So with that, we can find that there are about 5.5 million visually impaired gamers in the United States. So moving on to our serviceable addressable market, we narrowed that down to the Fresno County just to make it a little easier to work with. And so that leaves us with about 633,000 separate gamers in, in Fresno County, which would leave us with 12,662 of those having some sort of visual impairment. So at an average unit price of 99 cents, that gives us a potential revenue in year one of about $12,500. And so to move on, how we're planning to reach out to our users and how do we get people to know about us and what we're planning to do is to start off with online forums. Because the people we've dis we've talked to and interviewed about with visual disabilities, we found out that they do use online forums a lot to discuss a lot of things with technology that do and don't work with them. And it's a large community of people that can really communicate together. So with that, we'll be able to have direct communication and a large audience easily for free and be able to really get our name out there. We'll also plan on using advertising such as audio advertisements on the radio and commercials and endorsements, meaning that our users will be able to hear about our company a lot more and be able to spread the word with each other. 
So the way we're going to produce revenue is by having web page ads to advertise our games themselves as well as providing ads on our applications and as well as game downloads on certain app stores like the iTunes and the Android app store create revenue for companies as you get more downloads. So our needed funding, we don't have exact numbers but we know what we need. So we need like costs for, for staff, for people uh, who know how to code and make games because we only have Ben and me that know how to code, so we need more. Um, also software, um, any you know Python software that we might need to code, or JavaScript software, and computers, just hardware that we would need. So our exit strategy is after three years, we plan to sell the company for what it's worth, meaning that as we grow bigger and bigger as a company through these next three years, we'll be able to realize what the company is really worth and sell it for that so that we can be able to know that our company is going into very good hands and someone who wants to really make it bigger and better than it could ever be before. And with that, thank you. We're open for any questions, comments, or concerns. So you talked about um, staffing only in the coding capacity, but you know who's going to sell your ad space so that you can gain that income? Um, who's going to answer your phones? So I think you guys need to kind of hone in on what it really takes to staff a company like that. Albeit it's online, it's sales, but you're still going to have a hub. Mm -hmm. Even if it's working from home, someone is going to be filtering those calls. Someone's going to be making the calls to sell the ad space. You know, somebody's going to be um, onboarding. So, have you guys discussed that at all? Um, yeah, we've been planning on working to reach out our company and be able to really make sure that we can get all of the ins and outs of what we really need. But we realize that these three needs are our biggest starting costs of what we really need to be able to get our company started and with the very basics. Do you have an idea as far as your uh, first release, as far as what type of game you would like to create? Um, we've actually started creating a game script and title, um, what we've called it Into the Abyss. It's a gameplay about you as your character, you're narrated through a story about falling into an abyss and finding your way out with some companions and being able to really work through and strategize how you're planning to go through. I would definitely um, recommend incorporating that uh, into into the presentation because it's a really innovative idea, creative idea. It's kind of a th throwing me back to my truck, you know, Zork days. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's our inspiration. Yeah, it is the, our, it's the, exactly our inspiration is Zork. Yeah. yeah, the OG, the original game. Yeah. We, game sat, we all sat and worked and looked at it together and kind of played it some. So. Yeah. so in looking at, so you're, you're working on script. Have you speculated, estimated as far as programming time, the hours that it's going to take to develop your first prototype? Yeah, um, we've kind of just been working in like in pieces throughout the last like eight months on it. So we have kind of a base like skeleton of the game itself. Um, total, we don't really have an exact amount of hours for the game because all the games are different. They all require different uh, mechanics, different types of coding, different mm -hmm. yeah mechanics as I've already said. So it's each title kind of varies. Yeah. So part of this is, as you're doing with software development, is coming up with a developmental budget. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, knowing how much money that you, to at least to get it to a prototype. So I'd strongly encourage looking at like average coding, you know, by phases and then expand that. So that you can say, you know, are we $20,000 from a prototype, 40000 And you calculate that by labor hours. Mm -hmm. You know, don't forget to pay yourself first. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Do you have any kind of estimated required capital to get this started? Um, we would probably say about 10000 just to get started so that we can really work together in getting the software and the amount of hardware that we would really need because um, the game development would obviously take a lot of space in computers so we would need to be able to make sure that we have enough space, enough software, enough experience in order to get really started. Well, it went a little fast, and, um, so I missed a couple parts. The ad, can you go back on the screen to go one more? Right there. Web page ads. Are you talking about having revenue from the ad itself, like click pay? Yeah. Okay. And then the game downloads, have you thought about or looked at other 
not games exactly like this, but are you want to, is it free game and then you're getting the ad stuff or are you going to charge $1.99 for your game as an app? Um, oh. Because you thought about that. Well, we've, we've done some research and we found that most people are willing to spend between one or 99 cents and 199 for a game and no more than that usually. So we plan to keep it about 99 cents per game and then if there are certain add-ons or if a game does really, really well compared to our other ones, we plan on probably making it to where you could pay to add on to the story to continue going farther into right. it. Right, it's a good way to yeah, stair-step the revenue model. Can you go back one more screen? Right here. Oh. Yeah. So when you went to the serviceable addressable market and you talked about impaired at the twelve thousand six hundred and sixty two, I missed was that a percentage that you took from Yeah. It from was. the US percentage and then you applied that percentage to the Okay, good. The county population, yes. And then, then your potential revenue, were you basing that on ninety nine cents or were you basing it on a dollar ninety nine or were you basing it on do you know that? If you don't know, that's okay. We were basing that on the we were we were going with an average unit price of ninety nine cents, so we were thinking that as a starting base, okay. so that would give us that number and then see what we could work with. Yeah. To change that, yeah. So I think it's a great idea. I, I love that it came from a real experience that always has a, a lot of hook in it. And it is it's meaningful anyway. Uh, the connection to a father-daughter to play this game together and any other family member that would do that. As far as your presentation, I would say get some of the numbers in there, but you already know that. I, I know you're rushing and trying to get your pitch out and everything else, but you need to know these numbers mm -hmm. because they help you see the viability of the business. And as you get it, I mean, I know you're being told this by your teachers and you're being told by other judges, but you, you, when you get those numbers down, you start to see like how much investment you might need, and then you can start talking to folks about when, when you ask for somebody, are you gonna, who wants to build an app for us? You know, you go down to Bitwise and you talk to those guys and say, is there anybody here that builds apps? And they give you a quote. Well, they need to know a little bit about what you're doing for the quote. And then you take those numbers and you add them together. Mm -hmm. And then you take the potential revenue, and the potential revenue says, this is how much we'll make, this is how much it'll cost. And that starts to bring you into something that you can really pitch for dollars, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's what I wrote, hone in on the smaller details. It's a great overview, but what's the next steps? Mm -hmm. I wrote that exactly what he was talking about. Mm -hmm. And, and I think it's um, definitely an underserved population that visually impaired, and there's a few local nonprofits who serve this and you know, like Valley Center for the Blind might be an interesting kind of marketing angle or um, way to position your business differently. If you have some sort of partnership with a nonprofit, um, they could help you promote it. Maybe consider you know a small portion of proceeds of every sale going to support uh, a nonprofit who also works with this market share. Mm -hmm. Another comment that, you know, when we talk, it helps us get more <laughs> going, but uh, grants, I think there could be grants that have been unexplored in this genre, what you're doing, what you're attempting, and I don't know how to help you get towards that, but I would just say don't forget grants, look into it, yeah. because investors will want to know too that they're, they might match a grant. You might get a grant that's federal, then you might get a grant that's state, then you might get a grant that's county depending on what your market's going to be. So if you're starting in Fresno County, you might get a Fresno County Office of Education like, that'll point you to some from the state that'll get you a grant because of what you're doing. And also, there are places that work with people like this, like collectively, like ARC of Fresno, um, and Adult Transitional Program, Close Unified, like they're actually 18 to 21, and, and they have funds that they want to point towards things that augment the, the learning and the teaching. So getting some of that kind of as a base might give you just some ground revenue so you could develop more. You might start with a grant, you might start with a small like uh, organization that works with visually impaired, and that and then that will build, help you build your program. So you got your first one, and it's done, but it came through that, and then you can get going. You know? Yeah, that's, that's a great example. Uh, for instance, National Science Foundation uh, developed Alice.org, which was a virtual gaming environment specifically designed to recruit young ladies into software programming. And so grants.gov is always a good source of looking for federal funds uh, that are looking to enhance populations because this is such a good market. Uh, it's a very unique approach to, to the gaming industry. And so that, that's huge. 
Um, in looking at your, I had one question about your marketing strategy because it's, you, I get the forums and, and marketing through forums is kind of touchy because most forums do not allow commercialization of the forums, so no promotion of products. Um, however, with that said, with, with uh, this population, where is their social media footprint? Um, and, how, and what social media advertising would you expand upon? So one that we've been looking at a lot is a website called Reddit. I don't know if you've mm -hmm. heard of Reddit. So it's, um, it's basically just a large forum website and it does allow for companies to make their own, they're called subreddits, they're like their own forums mm -hmm. and you can do some commercialization and advertising and working with uh, your community on the site. So we were looking at that to kind of get as much feedback from the community as we can. Also, big one is like Instagram and Facebook, mm -hmm. which are just ones that really everyone uses. So getting a big presence on there would be our ideal situation. Yeah, and the reason, the reason I asked is if I heard it correctly, you were thinking about using some traditional media as far as radio and, and things like that. Uh, traditional media is hugely expensive and the rate of return on that is not always good, especially for a startup venture. And social media, that's what one of, it's, man, it's incredible leverage for a low per, uh, per interest cost point. So something you might want to think about. Thank you. Yeah, yeah and, and on that, you might think of even converting your business model to a nonprofit, because then you could get discounted or free traditional advertisement, um, which might be an interesting place to play and that would really set you apart. Um, the other thing is if you want to explore the grants, the um, Central Valley Community Foundation uh, that has an office in Big Garden, when you first go in, there's a desktop computer that they subscribe to all the um, search engines uh, that you can search for grants from national, state, federal, uh, private nonprofits. You can just search in keywords. Um, and that's a free service that they provide to the community if you want to look into grants. Thank you. Thank you. Just with my HR background, I want to just comment on your presentation. Not to go too tough on you, but I want to hear from all your team members not just to, because you all have a chief next year title. I want you guys to elevate your dress. Um, and it's really nice when you hand something out. I'm a tangible person. I want to be wooed. Mm -hmm. If I'm going to invest in this business, or I'm going to hire you, or I'm going to be your shareholder, you need to romance me a little bit more. But overall, I think you guys did a good job. Thank you. Uh, one last piece on the uh, nonprofit versus for profit. There's two forms of nonprofit at the federal level. One is faith based, and the other is research and, and learning, mm -hmm. education, basically. Mm -hmm. So it wouldn't take away from you being a for profit if you had a nonprofit start the platform. Then it opens your availability of grants at much greater levels. Okay. <coughs> That's a good point. So, and then, then you go from there, and once you get the base, so your nonprofit could actually do all the build out of all the programs and all the coding, and all, it could technically. And, and a nonprofit, don't, don't get it wrong, it has funds within it to pay people that are staffed because it goes towards program, and the program is what you're doing to put this together. And this thing kind of fits that field, mm -hmm. and then you could flip it once you got everything built, and now you go for profit with your mm -hmm. product. No, or you could license out your product at that point and sell it to somebody, like you were saying, your exit strategy. You might do it before it even goes, uh, you know, it gets its launch nationwide to be used. You know, you might just do it after you've got it all developed. So it might just be development and then sale, mm -hmm. the licensing it. Just a thought. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Good job.